Hip-Hop.com, all sorts of various hip-hop outlets and publications. Um, Fred Bear hit me, he was like, yo, let's do this 21 questions then. We're in beautiful Hell's Kitchen, New York City. Lovely, lovely. Um, so let's get it. Let's get I'm, I'm excited for 21 questions. I love there's nothing I love more than talking about myself. I, I can just answer Biggie or I can tell you like uh, Nas and Jay aren't consistent enough in their, throughout their entire careers. Biggie's body of work was limited, but I loved it all so much. And um, and frankly, Jay to me just doesn't exist without Big. So it's, it's hard for me to say Jay. And then Nas has just had too much rap shit over the years. It's, it's brilliant as it is. So I say Big. In terms of overall importance, I maybe you say Dre, but in terms of my personal love, I'd probably say Rizza. Just because, again, the amount of work he has out that I love so much. You know what I mean? Dre has a bunch of great albums that I love. But I feel like RZA has like double that. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's that. It feels that way between all the solo albums. Tits for me. I, I, I love ass. Don't get me wrong. I love ass. But again, if forced to choose, I think tits bring you more joy overall. So, but I love ass. Don't get me wrong. I'm gonna go tits. I wasn't into hook wrestling around the time of uh, Hollywood. I got back into it after, so I missed it. Um, I mean, I remember it because it was a big deal. Like even if you were into wrestling, everyone was like, "Hogan's a bad guy." Yeah. Like it was like almost a news story, yeah. which is how big all Hogan was. But in terms of pure joy, madness. But uh, Hogan did some things that were douchey as a good guy that when you watch now are so cheesy. Like his pose outs in the ring sometimes were so over the top. But as a bad guy, he was actually pretty, pretty dope. But uh, I, I take Macho Man either way. Both have gotten me into trouble. Both have been good for me. Um, but these days, Twitter is just so much quicker for me to use. But in terms of personal connection, you end up missing out on a lot of people. And I think you're gonna have a lot of relationships with Lou because you didn't realize someone was reaching out to you on Twitter. And that is, I think, personal better. But I'd say I use Twitter more than anything. I don't think the song Death of All the Tune, if, if we look at it from that perspective, enough to beat everything that came out of Auto Tune because there was some good shit there. The T-Pain singles alone, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of whackness, but you can't, I'm removing the whackness of Auto Tune. There's so you can't include everything. It's not that's not T-Pain or Auto Tune's fault. That so much whack shit happened. But the core of it, when it was first popping off, like just even if you look back at um at fucking buy your drink, even if you just start with that, that song played forever. Like that is a song that as a DJ you can put on pretty much great auto tune. J. Cole I think is dope, but I don't remember the name of his mixtape. And so far gone, everyone knows every word of practically. Which is crazy. So on that, I have to say Drake. But I don't know, talent-wise, I'm not sure. I'll have to see what, what they're both made of. This is the best question ever. Um, real talk, Bowling. 
my other video that, that no one ever sees. I got all my rapper friends from BC. Everyone's in there wearing bowling uniforms. I got a bowling company to send us bowling uniforms. Friday night and we ball uh, and we balling. League playoffs, co-ed teams, round robin. <laughs> and I just think a fucking hip hop song saying league playoffs, co-ed teams, round robin. It's kind of brilliant. If Raw fucks around and continues the way it is, though, I'm gonna just be good with SmackDown and watch my Monday Night Football DVR Raw. But that was that was a great question. That's tough. I'd say the NFL. From what I know, I feel like Edge and I seem is probably better than NORE. Like I love Nori. He's the best. Keep it thorough alone to put an album in the top in a, in a high uh, category. Black Dogs. LMC. Maybe a better MC than Q2. But there's something about Tribe that resonated with me that they'll probably always be like my favorite hip hop group as far as like a regular, you know, little three man hip hop group. Their Tribe's probably my favorite. Uh, Mecca and the Soul Brother, but not because it's necessarily a better album, just because in terms of Pete and CL's career, they only had two records really in the EP. Gang started so many to the point that I don't even know if I think Hard to Earn could be my favorite one. I think Moment of Truth could be my favorite one. I, I think, you know what I mean? Like there's Step in the Arena could be my favorite one. So Mecca and the Soul Brother, you know like that main ingredient are like tied pretty much to me. So I, I'd say Mecca and the Soul Brother. I think Who Shots is one of the craziest beats ever. I had it on bootleg way early when it was a different mix, like much shorter, one verse. The beat was different, it was a muddy, muddy mix. And from the beginning, it was just so fucking hard. And Biggie doesn't, what makes Biggie better than pop, Biggie doesn't have to say anything direct like that. There's nothing direct in it, it's just a crazy song. Pac is much more like, fat motherfucker, I fucked your wife. And, uh, that sounds like my Eminem mix, so that's not, that's not, that's not straight to So I'd say Mishash. There's so much cool shit you can't get on regular radio on satellite. But the feeling you get from hearing something on real radio, I don't care what anyone says. If you're looking to hear, let's say a new J record drops, the, the comparison of hearing it on Hot 97 for the first time versus hearing it on Shade or one of those channels, it's not the same. So that's kind of a split question. For certain purposes, I'd say regular radio. For certain purposes, I'd say satellite. He raps on, you know, his accolades go without saying, like what he's done for other rappers. But Kane, Kane, like so many rappers exist because they want to be Kane. And, and Long Live the Kane, I think, is the best album between both. So I'll go with Kane. Oh, oh, we're going like that, bro. <laughs> um, totally different vibes. Again, there's an excitement about Summer Jam that's uncomparable. Backstage. The, the fucking energy, it's like the hip-hop grandness. Like you really don't know who's gonna show up at the highest level of energy. Rock the Bells, you pretty much know what you're gonna get, but it's such a good time, and the vibe in there is so hip-hop. So in terms of like raw energy backstage, I'd say Summer Jam may have a bit more excitement, but Rock the Bells is a cool vibe. Both, both please. On an ideal holiday meal, I'm getting the filter fish first and the bowl of matzo ball soup. If you have to choose, I think matzo ball soup is a good matzo ball. A little dense, not completely fluffy. Slightly dense matzo ball, good raw, carrot, celery. I don't need noodles in my matzo ball soup, that's not hip hop. Although I will, but I prefer it not. Um, but I really know for the first time in my life about, no, second time in my life, I bought the filter fish. Like not at my mom's house, but I was like, I gotta want some adult fish. But I bought a, a thing of it and some uh, red horseradish. And it's definitely delicious, don't get me wrong. They're both similar though. That's like so Jewish and that like we consider like a delicacy, but it's really kind of bland. But it's it's also quite delightful. I, I'd say both. 21 questions was dope. Um, those were incredible questions actually. Like, I, I do some interviews, I do a good amount of interviews these days. But it's fun to get asked questions that you know you actually really care about the answer, like all of them, especially with those permission box balls. Right there, I'm out.